Electron microscopy has been a gold standard for this kind of ultrastructure uh, that has really defined how cells are, are comprised. But it's only recently that we've been able to use electron microscopy in a new way to look at three-dimensionality of whole cellular systems. The conventional electron microscopy requires you to slice through your specimen um, in order to be able to hit your electrons to penetrate deep enough to get um, an image. So you can't, using conventional transmission electron microscopy, you can't, it's very hard to get a whole cell visualized. Um, in fact, we really don't know what a whole cell looks like uh, reconstructed at the electron micrograph level. Um, so there's a technology that is super exciting now that's able to potentially do that, and it's called focused ion beam scanning electron microscopy. And the short term for that is FIB-SIM. FIB, focused ion beam, and SIM, scanning electron microscopy. Um, so this approach combines the power of electron microscopy with an ability to slice through your cell or your specimen of interest. And the slicing can be done down to four nanometers or less. So you're imaging at four, you essentially use your scanning electron microscope to image through your specimen. And typically, the electrons will go a depth of about four nanometers. And then you just shave off using your focused ion beam to mill. It's essentially, it's just buzzing off the top of that cell that you've just imaged. Um, and then you do another image four nanometer deep. And then you use your focused ion beam to, to essentially saw off that portion. And you just do this until you go through the entire cell. At four nanometer slices, if you slice through a whole cell that's 40, 40 microns, uh, it's a lot of slices. So there are some challenges um, to putting all of the information together. Um, a, each slice, you need to analyze what you're seeing in each one of those slices. And then you have to stitch together all of the um, structures that you have outlined at each slice into one huge volume. And this is a hugely exciting world in this field uh, because um, to be able to uh, segment structures of interest in each slice requires a lot of either machine learning or painstaking hours for an individual to segment a particular structure of interest that you're seeing in that slice. But you've got to do that thousands and thousands of times. So it's pretty much not possible for a human to do this. Uh, but machines should be able to do it. Um, in fact, they've, we know that they can do it for simple structures. Uh, the challenge is it, um, can we uh, essentially engineer these computers so that uh, they can pick up some very fine structures uh, that we can see, uh, but the computer may have some trouble seeing. Uh, if we can do that, then we have the possibility to reconstruct all of the substructures within a cell. Um, and that would be for the first time. It's a very exciting challenge right now uh, that uh, a lot of people are interested in trying to pursue. Now, another aspect that makes this particularly challenging is that the microscope itself that is doing the ion beam milling and scanning electron microscopy uh, frequently sort of, I mean, it, it's, it doesn't necessarily work smoothly through thousands and thousands of slices. And so, again, Engineers have, um, are playing a very important role in making sure that that microscope can run continuously for weeks, if not months, uh, which is what it takes to scan, do an uh, electron microscope scan, 
and then a slice with this ion beam. Essentially, it's, uh, essentially they have to be in coordination uh, to go for weeks and weeks at a time in order to slice uh, through a specimen. So it's an, another example where lots of different people from different fields, engineers, microscopists, um, uh, you know, sample preparation uh, is all playing an important role in allowing uh, this really new approach for looking at cells at a very small uh, uh, scale uh, to be possible.